Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This is episode two of our new air hammer test series. Today we have the medium barrel air hammer from Harbor Freight that comes in at a wallet friendly $14.99. And if you were lucky enough to get a coupon when those existed or have the inside track club, you can even sometimes save a few bucks on that price. On our last episode, we tested a medium barrel air hammer from Ingersoll Rand, which is their sort of budget friendly air hammer. But at $48 is practically a Rolls Royce compared to this central pneumatic from Harbor Freight. Or is it? Let's find out as we strap on these low budget ball joint budgers onto the world's first air hammer power dyno. On our last AHT episode, you guys had a lot of suggestions for our new setup. So we tried a few of them and it turns out you guys weren't just flapping your jaws. Up first is the biggest improvement we could have made on this rig a way for the hammer to not sort of come off the wedge and cause us to have to restart this test. We tried a couple ideas and this one worked best. We pressed some steel tube onto our wedge with a 15 ton press until enough of that tube overhung the wedge to keep our standard hammer bit contained. And with the tube being pressed solid enough onto that wedge so that it meets our German spec of guten tight. This works a treat and didn't appear to influence the results at all. So appreciate that. The next is to include a best case scenario test. Like on our impact wrench testing on this channel, we're going to crack that wall pressure open to 150 PSI just to see what they can do. This shows the best numbers they'll likely be able to hit and gives you guys an indication of the difference air pressure makes to wake up a tool like this or not. To include this new test, we did revise the rank list up a bit in order to show that new score. We'll cover that at the end of this episode with the power figures on these two tools. Now, while our debut IR air hammer isn't advertised as a medium barrel air hammer per se, IR's other medium barrel air hammers share many of the same specs. And this medium from Harbor Freight has a two and five eighths inch stroke, just like the 114 GQC. As for model numbers on the Harbor Freight, that's going to be a bit of a game of spin the bottle. The old central pneumatic comes in three different model number flavors meaning there are up to three different factories or suppliers providing this to your local store. If Harbor Freight brings the beans today, it's going to sort of be a your mileage may vary situation, which sort of comes with the territory when walking into a Harbor Freight. But for $14.99, that's a gamble we, and we thought maybe you would be willing to take, so let's find out. Our first test we're going to show you today is max power. This is five seconds at 90 PSI running in the tool with the trigger pulled. Up first is Ingersoll Rand. And here's the Harbor Freight. So the Harbor Freight finished 10% down here. Both of these tools have the same stroke, so it really comes down to blows per minute, piston mass, and airflow efficiency after that. But since Harbor Freight doesn't even show blows per minute, this is the best chance anyone has at seeing its bargain bin power compared to really anything. On our next test, this is called minimum power. Same settings as max power, but use just the trigger to try to control that power and minimize it. This measures how much you're able to sort of trigger the tool. Here's the IR. A large spread like that between the two orange lines is what we're looking for. The trigger engagement isn't perfect. It is plastic, but able to be throttled. Up next is the Harbor Freight. So a narrower range here for the Harbor Freight, and it felt more difficult to us to control with its minimum blows feeling like they were really doing more work, but not a huge difference when measured on the graph here, as we see. Our last test is per hour viewer suggestion, a best case scenario, 150 PSI static line pressure. It drops to whatever it drops to in the tool. Up first is a 114 GQC and a test we haven't performed till now. So it's now donning that new locating collar as suggested by you guys. So 
so that IR able to break into 3Ks. About a 450 PSI jump, roughly 15% with that higher pressure. Let's see if the central pneumatic can improve just as much. The Harbor Freight picks up nicely with that new line pressure, ultimately finishing again 10% behind the Ingersoll Rand. But it is an indication that it's not being hurt or dying from those extra power beans like some tools we've tested from the store. In our testing, subjectively, we could feel the difference between these two tools, like we can when there's a 10% difference between two impact wrenches. So the power crown has to go to the more expensive, albeit still budget class 114 GQC from IR. But let's see how the rank chart feels about these two tools' performance when we're incorporating the length and the cost of them. With having the new best case scenario test, both of these tools sort of get a reset, and the new theoretical max for this class of tools is about 800 points. Their information gets displayed in these columns. Their minimum power run is recorded here, which we'll use in a bit. The max power run is turned into points, but less dramatically so than the BCS run, so that's 26 points for the IR and 24 points for the Harbor Freight. Their best case scenario runs at the higher pressure are recorded here and turned into points like so. That's 308 and 277. Then we have those runs displayed as force and actual pounds here, pounds of force. Of course, we're using a mechanical advantage here of using a wedge, but also losing a lot to friction. It shouldn't be an exact value equaling the specific force at the end of the tool, but a repeatable one, which is what we're after. The power range column hasn't changed. It's the max run minus the minimum run with only trigger use changing those two values. That's a wider range for the IR, so it gets more points, 46.2 and 38.5 for the Harbor Freight. Even when ignoring the quick change chuck, the IR is longer. Here shown at 8.5 inches, so while it made more power, the Harbor Freight gets a higher score for being shorter, 36.2 versus 39.6 points. When we're talking power per dollar, it's hard to ignore the central pneumatic being one third or even less than one third of the cost of the IR. This column will be limited to 100 points max, but that doesn't stop the Harbor Freight from getting a 79.5 points here versus the already very good 27.6 of the IR. This gives the IR a total of 444 points and the Harbor Freight 458.6, bumping it into first place. We can't believe a $15 Harbor Freight air hammer is at the top of one of our rank lists, but it's early days and we have plenty of air hammers to come. In case you're worried about that power per dollar value figure keeping the Harbor Freight up there forever, remember that every score on this list is a function of power. Once we get up there in power, that's really going to start upping the points. Remember, the theoretical max for this category is 800. So if you're after raw power and you have the budget of around 50 bucks, we say get the IR. It's a great tool and mostly money well spent. But for $15, it's hard to be mad at the central pneumatic medium barrel here. We were surprised by its performance. That said, the reviews of it are some of the worst on Harbor Freight's website for an air hammer. So. It may require you going back to the store or a different store and returning this tool one or two times before you get a good egg like we got with them having three model numbers and potentially factories making this tool, which that process may outweigh the benefits of saving a few dollars at the end of the day. Either way, some actual potential with this tool like none of us and maybe you really expected. We'll be diving into plenty more air hammers down the road as we sprinkle in these episodes. Of course, making our way to the big four tool trucks and the best that retail stores and online can buy you. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, subscribe and thanks for watching.